C-reactive protein and health risks, the body handles its various functions in many ways. Inflammation is one of the ways that it deals with injury or infection. Foods that do not agree with the body for any reason, for instance in the case of food allergies or sensitivities, can cause the body to react in a way that is similar to the reaction that would occur in light of a disease or after an injury of any kind. There are several reasons that this inflammatory response of the body is a problem, including the potential to make you gain weight in the effort to get the energy that you need. It also increases your risk for a number of other conditions which are all risk factors for heart disease. These conditions include, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, atherosclerosis, some cancers, obesity, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, Source Royzen and Oz, 2006. How inflammation makes you gain weight, the body reacts to certain foods like it with any other perceived threat, with a release of the immune cells, mast cells and macrophages, to get rid of them. Unhealthy foods, foods that you are allergic to, and foods that you are sensitive to, will cause this response. The food that you eat is supposed to be used to create energy for the body's functions as well as for the brain. The brain will only accept energy that is created from carbohydrates. The inflammation caused in the body will prevent the food that is converted into glucose from getting to the cells of the brain making you eat more foods, especially sugary foods, so that you can get the right amount. This in turn creates more inflammation in the body. This vicious cycle leads to a nearly constant craving for sugary foods and weight gain because the body cannot deal with the flood of sugar that is not being used correctly. In addition, the inflammation can leave you feeling depressed or overly stressed which makes you more likely to make bad food choices. The stress of life also adds to inflammation if you are not strong and healthy, you do not handle normal stresses very well which in turn will lead to more inflammation. C-reactive protein and heart disease, C-reactive protein which is an acute phase protein, is greatly increased when the body is dealing with inflammation for any reason. It is also indicative of internal inflammation that testing for it is becoming standard when heart disease of any kind is suspected. The American Heart Association as well as the Center for Disease Control and Prevention has released information that C-reactive protein tests can predict recurrent heart disease and stroke and can possibly be used to calculate the risk of death from these conditions. It has also been shown that there are high levels of COP in patients with unstable angina as well as acute myocardial infarction. The higher the levels, the more likely these conditions are to be fatal. There are additional risks of high levels of C-reactive protein including, an increased risk that an artery will reclose after angioplasty, less optimistic prognosis for those who have had a stroke or for those with peripheral artery disease, had, increased risk of a heart attack. Inflammation in the body can be caused by an unhealthy diet as well as smoking, hypertension, lipoproteins, hyperglycemia, and infections, chronic or acute. The more risk factors that you have for heart disease of any kind, the more likely it is that you should be tested for C-reactive protein levels. A level of 1 to 3 indicates moderate risk for heart disease while a level of over 3 indicates a high risk. For both levels, lifestyle and dietary changes should be made as well as other medical interventions. Better diet lowers inflammation and C-reactive protein, because the body sees poor diet as a threat, it increases inflammation which in turn increases the levels of C-reactive protein in the body and your risk of heart disease. Fats and sugary foods are the worst of these, however good fats, especially omega-3 fatty acids can fight this inflammation. There are also a number of other ingredients and compounds that can fight inflammation in the body. These are, isoflavones, found in soybeans and all soy products, lignans, found in flaxseed and flaxseed products as well as whole grains, polyphenols, found in teas, fruits and vegetables, glucosinates, found in cruciferous vegetables, carmosol, found in rosemary, revitrol, found in red wine, grapes, red or purple grape juice, cocoa, found in dark chocolate, quercetin, found in cabbage, spinach and garlic, sauce, moisin, ND and Oz, Maryland, 2006. Losing weight is the first suggestion that is made to reduce the risks for a number of conditions, including heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Reducing your weight by only 10 to 20 percent can lower blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugar allowing better control of conditions related to these factors. In some cases, losing weight may allow you to lower your need for medications or end your dependence on them altogether. A good diet should consist of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, but in the right amounts. While eating bad foods can lead to inflammation and increase the level of C-reactive proteins, not eating can also cause the body to be stressed as well. Stress, whether it comes from internal or external factors is another risk factor for inflammation in the body. The amount of fats that you get in your diet will depend on other factors, but no matter how much it is, it should be healthy, good fats like olive oil, avocado, and fatty fish. Any fat that is solid at room temperature as well as those that contain the word hydrogenated should be avoided. Fat is the most easily broken down of all of the macronutrients. The body does not have to use any effort or energy to break down fats. No matter how healthy they are, fats should be the smallest part of the overall daily calories.
Carbohydrates are the primary source of energy in the body and the only energy source that the brain will accept. Complex carbohydrates are found in whole grains and vegetables and do not break down rapidly in the body. Simple carbohydrates are those that are made with white sugars and white flours and are broken down far too quickly. These are also very likely to cause increased inflammation in the body as well. Protein comes from two sources, plants and animals. All animal protein sources, which include meats, dairy foods and eggs, are complete. They contain all of the essential amino acids that the body cannot make on its own. Plant proteins are incomplete with the exception of soy, however they tend to be leaner and have less calories and far less saturated fats than animal products do. The amount of protein that a person needs in their diet will vary based on their age, sex, and activity level, however, the American Heart Association suggests that the best diet limits protein intake to no more than 35% of the total daily calories. In addition to food sources of protein, there are a number of protein sources, each that can be a beneficial and nutritious part of the healthy diet. Profect, from Protica for instance, has only 100 calories per serving but provides 25 grams of protein, 100% of vitamin C and 10% of vitamin B complex. You can also try Prusis Registered Trademark which is the first all-natural liquid protein supplement. Each ready-to-drink vial provides more protein per ounce than the leading protein beverages.